Hello. In this lecture, we will take the last part of uh, Branson chapter uh, on consumption theories. And we will talk about the liquidity constraints and the Dusenberry theory, relative income hypothesis. Okay. So let us start by understanding better that by far we have taken into consideration this budget line. And what is this budget line exactly saying? Kya bolti hai budget line beta? This budget line says that the present value of consumption should be equal to the present value of income. This is what this is. Present value of consumption should be equal to the present value of income. But this assumes, so when you write, suppose two year period. So what will you write? You will write Y0 plus Y1 upon 1 plus R. This is my income. And you will write here consumption. So you will write C0 plus C1 upon 1 plus R. And you will write it like this. Ki total consumption should be equal to total income. But <clears throat> while doing this, you assume that if I don't consume anything in period 1. Then my consumption in period 0 will be this much. It means I can freely borrow from second period into the first period. I have borrowed that and I have been able to consume that also in the in the in present period. So when we write this equation in the background, we assume that there is free borrowing and free. Saving. You can freely borrow and freely save. Free borrowing, nahi, freely borrowing. Easily you can borrow and easily you can save. However, there are some households which cannot borrow. Just for example, I am a student. I have never borrowed in the past. I go to a bank and I tell them, can you give me some money? I will refund you after one. Will the bank easily give me? No. The bank will require my civil score. But I don't have any civil score till now because I have never borrowed. Am I earning any income today? No. So, beta, we were talking about the life cycle hypothesis in which we did this. We did something like this is going to be your income path till period T and this is going to be your consumption path. And here we had assumed that your consumption is more than income. You were borrowing money. But what if nobody gives you loan? What if the banks don't give you loan? So what will we go ahead and What will we go ahead and do? So therefore, a lot of times, when the households cannot freely borrow, then in that case, uh, when there is a constraint on these households, then in that case, that is called as a liquidity constraint. What is that called? Liquidity constraint. So, liquidity constraint basically has two aspects to it. First, there is uncertainty that bank and borrower feel about the future. Bank ko lag raha future mein aapne aaj tak kabhi loan liya nahi tha. Pehli baari mein aapko loan de raha hu. Kya pata aap future mein na rahi pay kar pao. So, there is risk of default by the borrower. So, because of uncertainty in the future and because of risk involved, there may be a chance that the bank will not be able to give you any loan. This it happens a lot of times. But suppose you need a loan, you need to keep some collateral. You may have to keep uh, like house, car or some something like a collateral. When you need to go ahead and take a loan against education, to education loan may government guarantee karte ki agar kisi ne nahi repay kiya, to government will repay. So, okay, education loan government is repaying. Otherwise, you will put some collateral and repay. So, a lot of times what happens is that suppose you need a personal loan. Government will not go ahead and will not guarantee your personal loan. You may not have any collateral. Will you be able to get the loan? You will not be able to get the loan. Right? Suppose there is another person who has taken loan in the past and has not been able to repay the loan. Will he be able to get the loan? He will not be able to get the loan. So in such situations where the bank thinks that you will go bankrupt, you will not repay the loan. Will the bank give you any loan? Bank will not give you any loan. So when the bank loan dega hi nahi, when the bank will not, re will not pay you loan, can you consume more than your income? 
you cannot you can only consume equivalent to your income so this is your labor income suppose this is your asset income but both these incomes of are of period t तो आपकी जो कंजम्पन है ये सिर्फ उसी साल की इनकम से हो सकती है यू कैन ओनली कंज्यूम आउट ऑफ पीरियड टीज इनकम वेदर लेबर और नॉन लेबर यू के नॉट इन दिस कंजम्पन यू के नॉट हैव पीरियड टी प्लस वन इनकम एट इट्स प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ये नहीं कर सकते कि ठीक है आज मैं इनकम uh, से ज्यादा खर्च कर लेती हूँ और कल मैं उस लोन को रीपे कर दूंगी That is no more possible because of a liquidity constraint. Because no bank is willing to give you any kind of loan. Nobody is willing to pay you a loan. So in that case, this is what happens. Your consumption can simply be out of your income, whether it is labor income or non-labor income. These are your marginal propensities, beta. Marginal propensity to consume out of labor income. Marginal propensity to consume out of non-labor. income or asset income so consumption can only take place out of this there will be no consumption out of future so it's like this aaj tak hum apna budget constraint aise likh rahe the now i don't have anything for the future my consumption today can only be maximum up to my income in this period i cannot borrow so beta ab is terms mein what will happen what will happen in this terms so till now the diagram i had drawn for you if you refer back to the lectures the diagram i had drawn was that this is going to be my income this will be my consumption but ab jab tak main young hu till the period i am young i am not getting any kind of loan so if i am not getting any loan then consumption cannot be more than income ye nahi ho payega so in this part beta consumption cannot be more than income so consumption can maximum be up to my income ye wala part ho jayega and then the remaining consumption function is fine ha huh. when i am old then consumption can be more than income because then i have saved money during my middle years and i am consuming out of my savings so my consumption can exceed income but ye wala jo part tha beta this was due to loan taking this loan taking is no more possible now so existence of the liquidity constraint would not eliminate life cycle patterns in consumption and saving constraint borrowing at the young age you will have constraint only at the young age you will still save in your middle age and till point a your consumption will be equal to income then you will be saving and here consumption will be more than income because of your savings it also implies effect on the cyclical fluctuation in income on consumption is felt more sharply by the younger segment of the working population to thoda samjho beta jab bhi bhi because consumption in young age can only take place out of income in young age now there is no borrowing which is possible so whenever income of these people will fall their consumption will fall and when consumption will be lower it can lead to recession depression in the economy when their income will increase their consumption will increase when consumption will increase it will lead to a period of boom to ye jo cyclical fluctuations aati hain these cyclical fluctuations will be felt more sharply because of these younger segment of the people because they will only be dependent on their income they cannot borrow there is a liquidity constraint in the background i hope this aspect is absolutely clear to you so this is the first part of branson beta then the last part last part of this chapter it talks about the dusenberry approach which is the relative income hypothesis so what is this approach saying abhi approach kya bolti hai so beta this approach says that consumers are not so much concerned about the absolute level of consumption but they are rather con uh, concerned with the consumption relative to the rest of the population matlab i don't if i have an alto and you have a scooter i am fine but if i have an alto and you have bmw then i will start thinking ki yaar i have the smallest car of all i need to progress 
So consumer is not concerned with their level of income. Consumer is concerned how much they are consuming relative to the rest of the population. So let R be the weighted average of the rest of population's consumption. Mujhe chhodke baki sara rest of the population ka jo consumption hai, usko maine R se represent kiya hai. And then my relative consumption will be consumption divided by the average of the rest of the population. Consumption by average of rest of population. Consumption. Individual T ke liye, it's consumption divided by the average of the rest of the population. Average by, uh, cons it's consumption divided by the rest of the population. So now I am saying that the utility function is defined in terms of the relative consumption. Ki as compared